spectate because you're on the team. Wait, is this? <laughs> okay, fine. What is my YouTube shot up as well, I just realized. I actually see what's going on. Why are there three Christians in one Eli, show? Eli cute. Yes, thank you, Joggy. Thank you. The cutest, I mean, what? Hi, Katura. I don't know how to say your name probably, but hi, how's it going? <laughs> Eli, best commentator I know, Donna. Thank you. All right, we're waiting for... I sent stream link. Here we go, round one of, what are the two teams playing against? Synergy and Play With Fire. I mean, okay. uh, Synergy versus Play With Fire. We will have a Seer ban as the, let me turn my volume down because this is way too loud. What's up, Ghost? Um, we will have a Seer ban for the first character ban from this Play With Fire Hunter here. Immediately the survivor's going for a four rescuer team composition. This is uh, this is very interesting. We actually saw this get used uh, one time in the um, qualifiers for, I think it was uh, Call of the Abyss for China. This was uh, this actually happened a few weeks ago, but we're gonna have a four rescuer team comp against a possible Dream Witch here from Play With Fire Lucky. This is gonna be uh, very interesting to see how a team composition of this sorts will actually be effective, um, you know, against uh, against a Dream Witch. But um, if this actually is what they have to go for. Oh, it's music. What's up, music? Oh wait, Donna, can music can you move music into this VC? Wait, is he in the server? Uh, you have to ask Cosmo. Cause there's music in the server. Oh, uh, he is in the server. Ping him. Or something. He can come. Oh, he can come commentate with me. If he's here. If he's, if he's available. But uh, yeah, we are going to have um, the Seer ban. And it looks like just waiting on the Hunter character selection here. Immediately, these survivors, again, going to this 4 rescuer team comp, they readied up with all four of them. Um, so I'm actually very curious to see if Lucky Obstacle Dream, which looks like they are going to do so here. And. Um, Waiting on the talents as well, so the final final character selections are official. And uh, going up against a team comp like this as a Dream Witch, uh, typically going Patroller isn't too bad, but with that Gravekeeper on the team, that is your ideal chase target here. So if you don't find, you know, if you opt to, to go for that Gravekeeper and you do carry Patroller, it's going to be very difficult to actually down that Survivor. So we may see Blink, uh, especially on a map like Arms Factory. This isn't a bad uh, Blink map as well, so... About to practice clarinet. Oh, I was gonna say you could come commentate because I'm kind of by myself, but Eli, I'm here. well, Donna's here too, but Donna doesn't commentate, she just moderates. I, I can, though. 
Uh, hmm. Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at these dweeb players. Yeah, I know, Revy dweeb player. I know. Just kidding. Um. Anyways. Um. Music. Send me a video. Of... <laughs> All right. Loading in the match here. We are gonna have this uh, no man's the yeah, no man's land spawn for the dream witch here immediately rotating over towards this three pallet area locating i believe this is the wildling here this is not an ideal target you're probably not gonna spend a whole lot of time actually finds three survivors instantly this is uh this is pretty good for the dream witch and does locate i think that's the forward they're gonna oh let's even get the hit on the wildling free hit on the wildling there with the spawn follower excellent job from the dream witch good control uh to get some early damage on the board this really ends up stacking you know, against a team like four rescuers, they're forced to slow down, go ahead and heal this wildling as he is one of the main rescuers, and uh, becomes very difficult on the survivors, especially with the slow decoding as it is. Let's see if he can get a sneaky hit on the mercenary as well. Um, trying to waste some time here, does unable to get the hit there. Good elbow pad from the mercenary, avoiding that hit, and we're going to see the Dream Witch transition back towards um, this deep ruins area. Finding the four, this is probably one of your ideal targets. Um, again, you don't want to chase a wildling, you don't want to just chase a mercenary. They can take a lot of your time here. And uh, we'll see if he can get a sneaky hit on the forward here. Uh, forward transitioning a little bit early, reading that Dream Witch coming in here, and uh, is able to get some distance here. This is exactly what you want to see. Blink is now available. Let's see if he can get the trap. Just going to use this football to transition away. Getting to this next pal here is going to get it down. And um, no Blink so far. Just trying to trap in, get a free hit if possible. And uh, using this Leech Follower to pressure this Wildling and this Mercenary here. Has Blink available as well. Um, but uh, you don't really... Are you going to take on the Wildling? Going to use the Leech to take down the Wildling early on here. We'll see if he opts to actually go for that Wildling. Or if he just gonna, is going to keep tunneling the forward here. And it looks like going to transition targets to this Wildling. Yeah, using that Spawn Follower to start moving towards his middle area here. Mercenary unable to get that Wildling up. And he is going to be able to chair him. Um, for the first down one cypher machine able to pop i believe that was the gravekeeper cypher and uh this isn't too bad for the survivors wildling is not an ideal uh you know survivor to have on share in the early game um considering that you know wildling can immediately hop on that board after rescue you're essentially forced to uh to, to try to cause the rescuers to farm the, sur the survivor but um with quick attack recovery from a dream witch it could come into effect here we're gonna see the stream which just take down all of these pallets the survivors very good, uh, very good discipline, very good um, game sense. Able to drop these pallets early. You really want to do this against a Dream Witch, so there's no possibility for a jump scare. And let's see if he's able to actually cut off this Mercenary here. Unfortunately, messes up the elbow pad. This is going to allow him to get that first hit there. Can he double hit the Mercenary? That could be a very good position if he's able to do so here. Um, but again, you really just want to try to farm the Wild. You don't want the Wild to get farmed. He's going to be able to get on the board here. Can he get that first hit? Can he blink him for the second one? No, it looks like he's just going to go ahead and leech the Mercenary. This is the more safe play. I'm really just trying to go for pressure, map control, and getting this mercenary on the rocket chair. So, um, gonna use that. Uh, I think that was the forward, or moving that leech there. And uh, oh, unfortunately, the gravekeeper running into one of the spawn followers there, allowing for a free hit there, and damage just being spread all across the board here for this dream witch. This is a pretty strong position. All of a sudden, it went from pretty good for the survivors to pretty good uh, for this hunter. They have three people injured with the mercenary down as well. And we see the spawn follower and the leech coming in as well. So we're going to see the Gravekeeper get that leech remover um, and, uh, you know, take it off of the mercenary. But he's going to go ahead and re-leech him here. And now you have two people harassing. You have a forward and a wildling. Uh, Dream Witch typically very good against, you know, um, uh, very good against teams, uh, you know, that with heavy harassers. But unfortunately, neither of them able to actually get any harassing off here. Um, because of that pressure from the leeches. And he's going to try to take him to this middle cypher. He knows every single pallet has been dropped, so you can safely, you know, put the survivor in this area. Forward going for a stun, uh, but cut short there by the, by the leech. Good control from the stream, which forcing these survivors back and uh, gets that hit there as well. Can they make the rescue? I don't think they're going to be able to make the rescue. He's going to go for a hit on the chair and uh, misses the stun. This is going to allow him to stuff the rescue. Gravekeeper still able to make the save, but... The forward is going to go down. Still four Cypher Machines remaining. Looking at the decoding progress, they only have two Cypher Machines that have actually been worked on. And uh, this is just showing the incredible control and power from this Dream Witch. Um, and this is uh, this is becoming very difficult for these survivors as this game progresses. We're going to see him try to blink. Oh, unfortunately, missing the blink there. Wildling 
uh, able to get on the board there, preventing any sort of hit. Gravekeeper using that second shovel as well. Um, but uh, after this, the, the survivors are pretty much out of resources. Mercenary is going to be the one going for the save, but I believe... I'm not quite sure if he's dead on chair or not. We're going to we're gonna see. I think he's been on chair once. Oh, good blink! Gets the down on the forward. Two people down, two people injured, and still four Cypher Machines remaining with a slow decoding team. I mean, this is looking like an incredible position for these survivors. Possibly a four-person elimination if this Dream Witch plays this pro properly here. And uh, it looks like they're going to go ahead and share. I believe this is the forward trying to pressure the Wildling to, to get them back here. It looks like he's actually going to share the Mercenary. Fakes sharing the forward and actually goes for the Mercenary instead to try to push the Wildling into an awkward position and was able to do so here. So he's going to be able to get this character on the chair here. Able to chair the forward at this three pallet area. Very job, good job confusing the Wildling there. And able to stuff the Wildling. He got off the board one second too early there and is able to get the down. Three people down, four Cypher Machines remaining. This is looking like, uh, I mean, this this if this isn't a four person elimination, then I, then I don't know, you know, what, what this Dream Witch is doing. But anyway, we're gonna have uh, the Gravekeeper get leached here, just trying to get that last bit of map pressure here. The Wildling, he can, I mean, he can pretty much safely chair the Wildling as well. Uh, the dungeon hasn't even been revealed just yet. Um, and, uh, you know, Lucky is, is simply just saying like, if you wanna use this pressure or this sort of team comp against me, um, I'm going to show you that I can deal with anything that you throw at me and uh, doing a very good job of that here. He's going to try to trap in the Gravekeeper in the Shack area using the Wildlings Leech here if possible, but I think can get the hit here. He is able to get the down. That is going to secure the four-person elimination with four Cypher Machines remaining. Incredible control with the POW as well. Well-deserved for this Hunter. And that's going to be five to zero lead in the first round for Play With Fire. Would you like to add anything, Donna, the pro commentator? No, okay, Donna left. Um, oh, never mind. Oh, okay. What, Caleb? You want to? What you want to add? You want to say something, Caleb? What's going on, like? Um, <laughs> no. Donna, are you online, Donna? Uh, let me join. This is just embarrassing. Yes, Joggy. Yes. Oh my god, Caleb's trying to start something. Hello, Papico. Donna, Papico, did you remember the, uh, remember that, what do you call it? The, um, remember that thumbnail that I showed you? Yeah. Yeah, Papico made it, so. Oh, that was such a good thumbnail. I liked it. Yeah. You should hire them to make your thumbnails. I know, so I should. That's what I was saying. Like, is Ender hunting? I don't know. We're going to see. I think Revy's actually going to be the hunter. Let's check Revy's profile. Oh, wow. B Badge Geisha. Yes, Donna? Invite. Oh, wait. I have to invite you. Hold up. Before they start. Okay, there we go. put on my lip balm guys i had lip balm this morning all right i didn't have lip balm this morning so i put my lip balm on like kind of late my lips were like super messed up but then i put on lip balm you know what the most satisfying thing is ever when you have like really like dried out lips and you put lip balm on isn't that so satisfying well that's convincing okay anyways um geisha round one i know i love to see geisha round one Rebby probably yelling at them like he ain't gonna die. For real. <laughs> Alright. Um, what's up, Zeng? Why isn't Enter on? I wanted to see Enter 2, that would have been fun. But we're seeing Rebby. Rebby's a god, so. Alright, we're gonna see that mechanic ban uh, immediately from the hunter here. And uh, when you see mechanic ban first round, Donna, what does that indicate? Pro commentary. A lot of ums. A lot of ums. Um, that's good map control. What? Because they're stopping Cypher Rush. They're stopping Cypher Rush because they... You talking about the hunter or the survivor? I don't even know what you're saying. I mean, I guess sort of, but... Basically, the general idea behind banning this mechanic is... The main reason is this hunter needs a four-person elimination. Mechanic is one of those characters that heavily promotes that Cypher Rush and pushes for the endgame a lot quicker than most survivors. So, once you push for that endgame as a survivor team, it becomes less and less likely that the hunter can actually secure that four-person kill when the exegates have been activated. So, 
Um, basically, the general idea for this hunter is I need a four person elimination. I'm trying to slow down the decoding progress as much as possible by eliminating the mechanic as an option for these survivors. And we're going to see how that comes into effect for them here. Um, looking at the character selections, we are going to see a triple rescue plus explore from the survivors here, predicting that Bonbon bon or Sculptor, two characters um, that actually get countered pretty easily by this team comp. This team comp is basically, uh, you know, the general idea behind this is saying, like, I have three rescuers plus a decoder that can't get found. You have to chase one of these rescuers, and Bon Bon struggles at downing things like forward and mercenary. Uh, even, you know, even um, even first officer as well does not feed presence to this Bon Bon. So this is sort of an anti-Bon Bon team comp. The survivors were prepared for this, and we'll see exactly how this comes into play here. It is very risky to use heavy rescuers in a situation where you need a one-person elimination. You really want to push for that fast decoding, but you do have the explorer to promote that cypher rush, so we'll see how that comes into play here. Donna, anything? I'm fixing a bot right now, sorry. Donna's fixing a bot. Everybody. Um, yeah, Andrew, you did good, don't worry about it. My Merc is boosted. Hmm, interesting. Uh, all right, um, is that Kazu? Kazu's the mercenary. Doc said, tell us something we didn't know. Responding to your Merc being boosted. Without me, they get forming. Yeah, Jockey, you need to go carry. Exactly. The Magician. We need the Magician. You need to get four men without me, too. Nightwalker talking about All right, loading into the match here, we are going to see the Shack window spawn, which means the Bon Bon... Uh, might immediately transition over towards uh, the three pallet or water tower. Actually, no one spawns three pallet, what am I saying? Uh, they spawn between sandbags and factory. This is me not knowing my spawns. And I'm a survivor main. Immediately locating the um, the first officer. Unfortunately, the survivor's uh, not rotating. Oh, very early watch there from the first officer. Uh, really just not wanting to take any hit at all or risk anything in this instance. We're going to see the Bonbon bon actually tunnel the first officer here. This is a very safe play. If you're the first officer, you have to, or if you're the, the Bonbon bon rather, you have to chase one of these rescue characters. The chances of you actually finding, um, like the Explorer, is very risky. But the Explorer isn't in the vicinity. Can he find him here? No, it doesn't look like it. Actually just locating the Mercenary here. And we'll see if he goes ops to, to actually chase after him here. Donna, anything? Watching. Yeah, looking to teleport, that quenching effect should be in effect now. Unable to locate the Explorer. You see the Explorer using that mini mode to his advantage. Another elbow pad from the Mercenary. Just using this to transition towards the factory. This is the best kiting area on the map. Still looking around for a possible teleport. Actually brought him to the forward though. And uh, most likely going to see him transition after the forward here if possible. Um, again, looking around with that quenching for the Explorer. Was unable to locate him because he stayed in that small mode. Picks up that password page now. And uh, he's going to keep chasing after the forward. I believe the forward uh, carrying broken windows. This is a broken windows team comp for forward. Going to use this football to transition and uh, get to this three pallet. So far, good rotation and good kiting from these survivors. Yeah, going to use that pallet to get that speed boost there. Again, staying in this three pallet area. Can he dodge the bomb? Uses that football to transition. Again, avoiding these bomb chains. Very good job from this forward. And uh, good, you know, good, uh, good kiting, good rotation from the survivors. Explorer still out of range. Um, this is exactly what the survivors want to see. This is where you would say something, Donna. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wait, yeah. I'm reading the chat. Okay. Anyways, we're gonna see him teleport. Oh, able to find the explorer though. Explore. This is huge. 21% left on that password page. Trying to get a bomb hit. Can he get it here? I think he's just gonna take the regular hit. Yeah, gonna go ahead and go for that here. Uh, looking at the explorer's build is carrying broken windows as well. Gonna go ahead and bomb this pallet here. Can he avoid this bomb chain here? And uh, good juke from the explorer there, avoiding that hit. Gonna vault this for a speed boost and try to transition towards three pallet, but there's no pallets there, unfortunately. Um, and I can already hear Grass in VC yelling at his teammates, why are there no pallets? Um, but, uh, and we're gonna see, and, oh, gets the pallet stun! Incredible job! This is gonna allow him to transition to factory, this is the best kiting area on the map already. Two cypher machines down here, from mercenary cypher, 30% of the way done. And, uh, it looks like first officer going to work on one, that's 10% of the way done. Forward working on one, that's 80% of the way done. This is incredible cypher from these survivors, um, and very good pressure so far. We're gonna see the forward use, or sorry, the, uh, 
the Explorer used these uh, windows here to his advantage. He can get this pallet down in time. Good mind game from the Explorer. Instantly throwing the pallet at the Bon Bon, not expecting it there. And uh, he's going to keep kind of transitioning away here. Excellent bomb chain there. And uh, we will see the forward, or the Explorer rather, I keep saying forward, most likely go down there. There is the, finally gets the down there, but the last two Cypher machines already uh, above 50% of the way done on both of them. That was almost a five Cypher rotation plex kite from these, uh, from this play with fire team here. And um, this is an incredible position. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, he unfortunately did die on two of the last two Cypher Machines the survivors were working on. And a re big downside for them here is they kind of re cypher themselves. Gets the Terror Shock and able to stuff the rescue there. And uh, this is exactly what you need to see for the Bon Bon. Now full presence available to camp here. Can you get this stuff on the forward as well? First Bomb Chain, there's uh, the first one. Can you get the second one here? And uh, he's actually just going to pick up the Mercenary, trying to go for no attack recovery, I believe, here. This is a bit risky with a Bon Bon. Um, because uh, you really can't use those bombs here as advantage here. Gets the hit there, and uh, oh, excellent save from the forward. Gets the rescue without Tide Turner, as we predicted before. No Tide Turner there. The last Cypher Machine, 80% of the way done. But the problem is here is the Mercenary is the one with the password page, and he's on the ground, so he needs to use his self heal. It's only about 50% of the way healed. Can they prime the Cypher Machine in time? It is 98, I believe. And this character is dead on share. There's the first bomb hit. He has full presence. He can kind of just keep dropping these here. And uh, if you're the survivors, you need to use that pocket watch. If you're the f first officer, you have to use a pocket watch. Able to get the down. This all of a sudden could turn into a four-person elimination. Goes for the bomb there. Unable to get it on the first officer. Has to use the pocket watch. Can the mercenary jump up and pop the cypher with that password page? You have to do that here if you're the, the mercenary. All of a sudden, this match just went downhill again. These survivors need a one-person escape. I think you just need to pop it here. There's no point in going for a tie here. Just go for that one person escape, pop the cypher, and whatever happens, happens. And we're going to see the mercenary go in. Can you use the password page to pop the cypher? It's going to pop the cypher with detention, and uh, we're going to see the Bon Bon. Sorry, yeah, Bon Bon has detention here. And all of a sudden, this looks like a good position for the Bon Bon, but I think it's actually going to be a tie there. Unfortunately, unable to share that forward, I think is what he had to do in that situation, but uh, not doing so. And uh, we're going to see the forward transition towards this ruins area. Teleport available for this Bon Bon. Exactly. Just trying to buy as much time for the survivors to open this exit gate again. The exit gate's open in how long? Less than 20 seconds. And uh, good job. Good patience from the forward. Avoiding that hit there. Is it 20 seconds or 18? I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to see the down there on the forward. He's going to go ahead and share him here. Mercenary is going to be able to make it out the exit gate just in time. This is going to be the tie for Play With Fire and secure the first round win. Um, that is a yeah, tie for the survivors and a four-person elimination for the play with Fire Hunter. So this is going to be a seven-to-two round, round run win. Uh, incredible job, end game there from the Bon Bon, uh, almost able to come back uh, for synergy. Unfortunately, just out of reach there, but um, an excellent job from the Bon Bon as well. Again, this is an anti Bon Bon team comp. Let me check my messages. No, oh, no, this was an anti Bon Bon team comp. So the survivors were really prepared for this, but. Um, and rotated very well in the early game, but again, late game for the Bonbon, an excellent job coming back there and almost able to secure that win. Watching this makes me stress out. Can you use Explorer's page to open the XA gate? No, you cannot. It's only for Cypher Machines, unfortunately. Um, Donna, are you still on? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Donna, what did you think about that match? That was, uh, that was pretty exciting. Um, it was very intense. You see, the Bonbon had a that, that was, I was expecting it to be a win for the survivors, but um, stuff happened. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, an excellent uh, job. That's a very good game for the bon bon. Absolutely, excellent job from the Bonbon bon in the end, using that camp to their potential, uh, to its full potential. No full presence, still able to get the stuff on the mercenary, so that was incredible. Um, and uh, almost able to stuff the forward as well. Unfortunately, a little bit of a lack of patience there, getting that early hit. Um, trying to, you know, bait the Bon Bon, or rather the, uh, the forward into running into that bomb hit, but the forward with good patience, able to make the rescue successfully. So moving into the second round here, it is currently a one win to zero lead for Play of Fire. They did win the first round, seven to two. Um, so, uh, Synergy is still in a pretty good position. They can always come back in this next two rounds, and, um, we'll see how that comes into effect here. Nice play by Kazu, getting stuffed. Yes, just kidding. Oh, um, no, wait, that was an incredible game. Very, very good game. Yeah. You know, that, that, that kind of reminded me of, um, of like one of 
Mm -hmm. Reminds me of him as well. Uh, what's what's up, mate? What's the score? It is seven to two. Uh, the first round was seven to two in favor of Play with Fire, so they're currently up one to nothing. This is the first half of the second round. Uh, anyways, moving into the second round here, we're gonna see. It looks like Sculpt their band from the Survivors here, really trying to. Uh, they saw the Bon Bon be utilized by Revy in that first round, but eliminating the Sculptor as an option. I think they're gonna go for the same general strategy. Oh, they up the band violinist, huh? Um, that's actually quite interesting. Um, this does allow for Bonbon bon yet again. And uh, I think they're going for the same general strategy. They have that triple rescue explorer. Now this is a lot, you know, a, a very, very risky on a map like Red Church. Uh, this is not the best explorer map. It is easier for hunters to find explorer on a map like this. It's a lot smaller and it's open in certain areas. Not a lot of hiding spot, you know, spots for something like an explorer. So it's gonna be very difficult um, for the survivors if they opt to go down that sort of strategy if that explorer does get found. Now, if you are the explorer and you are able to hide out that entire time, especially through quenching effect and teleport, then you are in a very strong position uh, if you're the survivor team here. So we're gonna see, looks like a uh, lucky guy, probably just trolling, I would imagine. I don't think we're gonna see a uh, lucky guy <laughs> in this situation, but. Um, finally made it to one of your streams again. Yeah, thank you for coming by, I appreciate it. It's so hard to be Asian. <laughs> Uh, oh, they think they might have banned the wrong. They possibly, uh, could, they could have banned the wrong hunter here and they're they're possibly asking for a restart. Which again, I'm just the MC. I am not the organizer of the scrim. So that is perfectly uh, up to them if they want, or it's perfectly okay if they want to do that. And that is up for them to decide. Revy Goat Clown, you're so OP. Okay. Yeah, it's so hard to be Asian. That was pretty funny. Out. <laughs> I know, guys. This is literally this is what they do in China, guys. They use they use lawyer for rotation, and then they use lucky guy to get any item they want, and then they always win. You know, I mean, like this is just one of the China strategies. You know how it is. I just realized you can actually use multiple lucky guys in legendary rank mode. I didn't actually know that. I mean, I mean, obviously you can't because you start with four lucky guys, but I think we're just gonna see a surrender. Yeah, we're just gonna see a restart here. It looks like. There was an incorrect ban, most likely the situation. I don't think the survivors really wanted to ban Violinist. As far as I know, um, Revy doesn't play too much Violinist, so uh, that Violinist being banned there, everybody gets best deduction. Yay, I love that new update where everybody gets best deduction. Uh, but it looks like, um, what? Yes, sir, best deduction for everyone. Yeah. Oh, oh. Do you guys like my Frost Wuching skin? Look at this, guys. Oh, they just started. But it is a beautiful skin, I'm not gonna lie. Waiting for my invite, Eli. Got the accessory as well. Like, looking clean out here. Eli, tell Donna she's boosted. Oh, wow. About to go ahead and boost real quick. Ty, did you see my bon or did you see my Wu Chang skin? Yes, sir. I got the accessory. Like, it's four a.m. here. Oh no. Well, I'm glad you're still. Uh, you should go to sleep soon. But I'm glad you're able to watch. I do. I do appreciate you coming by. That's that's Frost very cool. Kinda <laughs> Frost kind of ugly. Oh, Genesis, you're getting banned from my chat forever. No, I'm just kidding. I love you. <laughs> you like no one cares about your Frost skin. Guys, I think I'd like to point out that Frost is literally um, the best Wu Chang skin. Um, it's not the best, but it's really cool. Is it the best? What's the best Wu Chang skin, Donna, in your opinion? Playing Guillotine. Um, I like his limited skin. The, not the, um, not the crossover one, but the one that has the other one. I don't know what it's called. That one's really ugly. It's really pretty. The Divine one? Or Far East uh, Wind? Far East Wind or Divine? Whatever the part. Far East Wind is good. I like Far East Wind. My Wu Chang is. Yeah, Wu yeah, Alright, let's, right, let's get back to. I'm um, oh, too over hype over Wu Chang skin. I'll show you my Wu Chang replays, guys. Oh, you're winning my Hunter matches. Anyways, moving into the second round here, we are going to see the Sculptor Band. This is the correct band from the Survivors this time. And uh, we're going to see a Mechanic and Explore. So, this Hunter really trying to counter um, this, uh, this strategy they went for in the first place. And it looks like we're going to see. Um, a oh no mercenary from the survivors here actually opting for first officer over mercenary which is uh very curious uh this is really not something typical you'd see 
Um, the only difference between Mercenary and First Officer is that, you know, Mercenary has four elbow pads and First Officer has watches, so... Um, we may just see the Bon Bon yet again. Bon Bon pretty strong against uh, against something like a Seer. Uh, this could be a pretty good team comp, uh, or a pretty good, uh, pretty good character selection being that Bon Bon if Revy opts to do it, use that here. Um, your dad is a pretty good, great thing to wear. Okay. <laughs> flying guillotine. I love flying guillotine as well. Anyways, back to comment. We gotta focus on this. Okay, it looks like we are going to see the character selections are in for both these teams here. We're going to see that um, this would almost be what we call the national comp. What that is is mercenary, forward, seer, and priestess. Essentially the four S tiers, uh, excluding the S tier that was banned. But we actually see first officer again in replace of that mercenary, which is very interesting. Merc first officer nowhere near as strong as something like a mercenary in terms of rescuing. First officer, a very strong character, um, just not as strong, again, as strong as the mercenary. So... Uh, we'll see how that actually comes into effect here when going for a save against a very good camping hunter like that Bon Bon. Loading into the match here, we are going to see that wedding spawn from the Bon Bon here. Someone spawns uh, Graveyard, Bottom Broken, Shack, and I believe Backgate is the last one. Yeah, Backgate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Me knowing my spawns. Yay. Eli can't give an owl. That is incorrect. Anyways, we're going to see the Bon Bon rotating. Oh, unfortunately, the priest is kind of running into the hunter there. And uh, a little bit of lack of communication between the seer and the priestess there. This is going to cost the survivors um, a little bit of rotation time here. We're going to see him go to the window. He's going to vault into uh, church here. And I don't believe Broken Windows is being... Oh, no, we do see Broken Windows speed boost. Going to vault this pallet for the speed boost and keep transitioning towards this back gate area. Uh, actually opting to go towards um, this church window yet again here. Trying to loop as much as possible. A portal not quite available here. If you're the survivors, you want to try to sear owl this hit. Uh, you have to dodge these bombs if you're the uh, if you're the priestess and you have to owl this regular hit here. And uh, excellent job from the priestess. What do you see so far? Able to bait out the owl. Good job from the Bon Bon baiting that out there. And uh, excellent dodges so far. From this uh from this survivor and uh gonna try to try to loop this area as much as possible but this is very difficult again wetting a very weak area um for kiting here but uh good job from this priestess avoiding all these hits so far and he's just gonna eat this first one here probably gonna use this to transition back into church here has a portal available and so far the cypher decoding progress is not bad 50 percent of the way done on forward cypher and 70 percent of the way done with two other cypher machines nice excellent yeah excellent portal they're gonna go ahead and uh oh actually Ops to go back to this window here instead of going through the uh, the shack side there. This is actually a very this is actually a pretty intelligent play. What this does is they acknowledge that two survivors are decoding bottom broken and back gate. So the priestess is kind of saying, I don't want to die near any of these survivor cipher machines. So I'm just gonna try to transition as far away as I can here. Vaults this here and uh, unfortunately getting that bomb hit there. And uh, there's not much you can do as a priestess there. But almost a three cypher kite. The first officer and the seer popping both of their cypher machines. Forward cypher almost done as well. So already a very good position for play with fire survivors. Anything you'd like to add, Donna? Um, Bon Bon attempting to patrol the area. Trying, pushing uh, forward off his cypher. And I don't know if they're going to rescue before or after. Looks like I'm going to use that timer bomb trying to predict... Trying to predict the forward there, but uh, let's keep going for a before half rescue. And uh, let's see what the Bon Bon can do here. Going for a stun. Can he get the hit there? And uh, oh, excellent stun from the forward. Avoiding that hit, getting the 360 stun, making the rescue before the halfway mark uninjured. This is an incredible position for the survivors just based off that one stun. That's why we talk about how forwards can literally change the tide of matches. Making a clean rescue there. It looks like we're going to pause the deduction, possibly uh, some lag from one of these characters here. We'll have to see. Yeah, it's, it's possible. It's definitely possible. But looking at this position so far, it looks like we're, we have... Um, anyways, looking at this position so far, it looks like we're going to wait for one of the characters to finish talking to their mom um, so we can resume the game. But uh, looking at this... The mom keeper. Looking at this position so far, um, this is a, I mean, this is a very good position for the survivors. Almost a three cypher kite and a clean before half rescue for this forward, getting an excellent stun on share there. Um, and uh, if you're the hunter here, Donna, what do you think they need to do to potentially come back in this? Um, first, they need to kill the priestess quite quickly because apparently the priestess is dead on chair and um, they, they were, just need to secure. I believe they were saved before half, uh, right? At least someone, I guess. Were they not? So 
Was it after half? Oh, if it was after half, that's uh, that's unfortunate. After half, uh, damn. Never mind forward through. Just kidding. Uh, it was still a very good. Um, that was still a very good sign. It was after half, but again, the survivors still in a position where they could potentially secure a tie here. Blink. Feel free to continue the deduction. I'm not captain, so. Mm, I don't know who is. Revy is. So. Let me. Quickly, mm. I'll quickly join play there. Let me see if Revy's in the in the same Just ping him. I'll tell them. Okay, you can you can resume, Revy. They Grass had to talk to his mom. Grass had, Grass had to talk. Grass got a phone call from his mom, so oh, okay. you can resume That's now. Fine. You can resume. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, I don't know if he got a phone call or what, guys. But let me go back to the VC. Okay, I told them they can resume. So. Yeah, Priestess would have to kite up the remaining of these Cyber Machines, unfortunately, getting that rescue after half of winning these bombs so far. Excellent job from the Priestess, but Blink's still available for this bond bond. And uh, tried to go for it there, but unfortunately, uh, looks like unable to get it. And uh, Blink's still available. We're going to see, oh, nice portal from the Priestess. Able to keep transitioning here. We'll see what the forward can do to potentially harass the rest of these Cypher Machines. Looking at the decoding, the last two Cyphers, 60 and 70% of the way done. Um, and uh, just going to use that Blink, just trying to secure the down here. Going for this tie. We'll see what the forward can do, but almost... Yeah, but unfortunately, almost no football available for this forward. And uh, unfortunately, running out as well without getting that stun there. And uh, it looks like we're going to see the Bon Bon. Go ahead and share this Priestess here. Um, this will secure... Yeah, they're going to be able to pop this Cypher Machine. Again, in a position to secure this four-person elimination. No teleport available for this Bon Bon. And uh, they're going to go ahead and pop the Cypher. Detention is available. The Bon Bon still without full presence here. So this is going to be a very rough endgame if they want to secure this uh, secure this tie here. Uh, locating the first officer. Still two pocket watches available for the first officer. This could be very detrimental for this hunter if this if this first officer is able to kite to Dungeon here. Dungeon is... Yeah, Dungeon is in that top broken area as we can see. Use the time bomb. Gets the hit on the first officer in the watch. There still has another one available though. Uh, again, not quite a full presence. Just needs to get this bomb hit if he wants to reach that. But unable to get there. We're going to see that second pocket watch get used. And uh, oh, that bomb just missing the first officer there. We're going to see the bonbon kind of just spray this area here. He has to just start swinging at the air. Can he knock the, four, the uh, first officer back far enough? Unable to do so. Gets the dungeon. Incredible job. Play with fire. That is a three-person escape. Four play with fire. Incredible dungeon escape there. And uh, that'll be a three-to-one lead going into this first half of the second round. Wow. What did you think of that match, Donna? Bonbon map, isn't it? Uh, yes. That's what I've heard. Um, any specific analysis that you'd like to add? Um, well, even after they, like, let the priestess die, like, saving after half, I'm pretty sure that was a mistake on their, on their part, but, um, they still had a nice comeback after that rescue. Yeah, an excellent endgame from the survivors, setting themselves in a position where the Bonbon was essentially forced to chase a first officer with two pocket watches. They knew exactly where the dungeon was located. The survivors, incredible communication there, um, able to secure that three-person elimination. Good job from the Bonbon, though, being able to force that rescue after half. They really did with, you know, they really uh, uh, was, were able to do what they needed there to potentially try to secure that tie, using that blink to just secure that down. Um, but unfortunately, the survivors uh, able to set up a nice position for themselves in the end game there. Just barely missing that hit on the dungeon. That would have been able to get the tie if he was able to get that there. But very good mind games from the first officer. Able to make it just before uh, getting hit by that bonbon. Bon. Do you like the magician skin? Oh, I didn't see what it was. I didn't see what the magician skin was, Joggy. But yes, I, I, it's probably good. Wait, let me send it to you. My dog keeps trying to jumble. Okay, dog, lay down. Okay, there we go. Is Kazu playing Priestess? He's a god. Interesting. Um, he is. Does anybody here like the new Edgar's... Is Edgar Painter? I think Edgar's Painter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Painter, Painter Esker. I actually haven't seen it, but... I'll send you all of these. What is this? 
I don't really look at skins, guys. The only skin I care about is Frost. I don't care about any other skin. Yeah, mom called. Yeah. Grass is the kind of person to get in trouble with his mom <laughs> during a <laughs> during a screw. Totally. The new magician skin looks like a B tier. They could have done better. Oh, damn. You got Frost the first time it came out? Yeah, I um, I didn't get it. Though. I should have gotten it the first time it came out. New S tier is not very good. I'm oh, in. Second best. Magician. Uh, magician. Isn't Magician getting like an accessory or something? Painter's S tier looks like golden ratio. Oh, really? Damn. <laughs> the only skin that matters is Vio's S tier. No, you're wrong. Frost is better. All right. I don't really like any of those. Yeah. Um, ooh, Endertrons is a champion. Ooh. Are you stalking people again? No. Um. Ant's cat is pinkest. True. All right, loading into the uh, loading, going into the second match here. Uh, second half of the second round, we are going to have that Bon Bon ban. Um, from the survivors acknowledging that this hunter is a bonbon bon main. I believe play with fire B is a S badge um, For bonbon. Bon. So yeah, so the survivors acknowledging this going ahead and go ahead and ban that here They are in a position where they need a three person escape to at least tie the round uh, A four person escape would give them the win for this round But again keep in mind play with fire won the first round so these survivors need to at least secure a tie here all this hunter needs is a tie. Yeah, this, the survivors are in a position where they need to secure uh, at least a three-person escape if they want to force a third round here. So a lot of pressure on them here, unfortunately. We'll see what they can do. Uh, going Ripper. Oh, interesting choice. Interesting choice indeed. Ripper not typically known. I mean, Ripper is known to be a tie hunter, but the biggest issue with Ripper is not only can he get rotated in the early game, he can also get kited in the early game. Without having that presence and invisibility and speed boost, it can be very difficult. Um, a good survivor can kite a Ripper um, pretty significantly, and that's why you don't see Ripper get used as much. It is hard to dodge those Foggy Blades in certain situations. Um, however, we'll have to see um, how this hunter is going to go about that here. We're going to see, it looks like from the survivors, we're going to see that Explorer uh, immediately picked from June there. Explorer, uh, we talk about this a lot, but Explorer is the second best decoded character after that mechanic being banned. Um, you know, Explorer promotes Cypher Rush with, the, with those password pages uh, and can also promote rotation by hiding from the hunter and forcing them to leave them and look for new survivors, allowing for extra decoding time and, again, supporting that rotation from the survivor side. You know, so we're going to see, looks like Double Rescue, Seer, and Explorer uh, from the survivors against play with fire b going possibly nope looks like they're gonna change their character selection again still hovering over the ripper um i do know b is known for a, to be a sculptor as well but we'll have to see what they go for i feel like they might switch last minute but i don't know definitely possible Ooh, hovering over wu chang as oh, wu well Chang. that's interesting And I'd love to see a Wu Ching. I personally am a Wu Ching player myself. Uh, well, Feaster as well, but we all know that. Um, but uh, Wu Ching on Red Church isn't typically a, the best character selection. It is very hard to teleport successfully on Church. A lot of walls that kind of block off those areas, um, and uh, it can be very hard on survive or on a hunter who plays Wu Ching. And it looks like oh, we're gonna see the Wu Ching from B here, possibly just going for a blink Wu Ching build, um, which is the typical you know Thai Wu Ching uh, scenario able to secure a tie if you carry blink um with that character so that's definitely what i expect to see here um if you're you know if you're the survivors
we're gonna have to see exactly what sort of build this Wuchang opts to bring here. Again, most likely gonna see Blink in a situation where you need a tie. But again, going back to what we were talking about before, this is not the strongest Wuchang map, so this is very interesting to see this character be selected for this first round. Um, and um, we'll have to see. Ty, the Wuchang expert, says church isn't good. Great. Yeah, okay. I was right, guys. Look at how smart I am. Oh, but it's because he has this skin. That's why he's using Wuchang. Of course, because it's the skin. Right, Donna? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, skins are everything in this game. Absolutely. Oh, we actually, I believe that's, yeah, he's actually opting to use teleport here. So this is very interesting. Oh, he's running into hun the hunter. Yeah, an unfortunate rotation from the seer oh. finding the Wuchang early there, or the Wuchang yeah, the finding well. him. Oh yeah, no owl available yet, but this Wuchang is still in white form, so the pallet breaking speed won't be incredibly fast, and uh, you can essentially just pallet spam this hunter until your owl comes up, and uh, this won't be too bad if you're the seer here. We're going to see the Wuchang try to mind game. Good patience from the seer, camping this pallet, avoiding any sort of hit there, and uh, we're going to see the Wuchang go ahead and change targets here. It looks like, no, nope, trying to bait out a teleport, but uh, gonna continue to tunnel the seer. Again, we see teleport as the trait for the Wu Chang. This is very, very risky in a situation where you need, um, where you need a tie. Blink would have been a lot safer. Um, but again, we're gonna see that teleport. Looks like gonna use that now. Gonna find, I think this is the, looks like the grave. Oh, I found the Explorer as well. This is incredible. Charge attack getting that first hit there as well. This is incredible. All of a sudden looked like a, a very rough position for this hunter. Uh, turn back into their favor here. There's a teleport. Can you get the hit before he's able to vault the window here? We may see this here. I'll get used and excellent owl though to keep the kite alive. We're gonna see the forward get, or sorry, the explorer get that broken window speed boost transitioning towards graveyard here. This Wu Cheng with presence available here, so he's gonna be able to use his bell to secure the down. But um, again, the gravekeeper, or sorry, the um, the explorer in graveyard here, and uh, oh, not using any pallets, and uh, this is gonna cost them most likely the kill. Let's see if you can mind game and probably this pallet. Excellent job from the explorer getting that pallet down in time. And uh, we're gonna see if he can vault this pallet in time. Gets the broken windows or the uh, the knee jerk reflex speed boost. Gonna loop back around in this area here, and uh, does get mind game there. And uh, wow, he gets the vault off again before the Wu Chang can get the down. And a good mind game there. This is an incredible kite from this explorer so far. Wu Chang gonna head, go ahead and switch places. Gets the pallet down as well. And uh, again, that was such a tough position for the explorer, but incredible discipline there, vaulting those pallets. You know, not using them too early. And uh, he is going to get knocked down there with that charge attack, but incredible job overall. Looking at the decoding progress, you have three Cypher machines with good progress so far. Forward Cypher, about to be primed Explorer Cypher, 80% of the way done, and Grave Keeper's about 50. Uh, I believe... Yeah, the Reception Cypher about 40% of the way done. The only downside to the situation for the survivors is that Explorer, I believe, was searching for a password page in that area. No longer is going to be able to get that here. We're going to see that Soul Cypher. We have to see the forward avoid this as much as possible here. Can he avoid getting Soul Cypher? He's able to do so here. Goes for the stun, uh, unable to get it there. And um, he will just take the hit and make a successful uh, normal rescue here. This isn't too bad um, for a survivor side here. Again, they need a three-person uh, escape. So we're going to have to see this Explorer do a very good rebound kite very good kite in the early game but um with a lack of pallets available here it's gonna be very difficult on them let's see if you can get that on the board oh unfortunately the forward getting too close there feeding the wuchang full presence and uh able to get double hit there he's gonna go for that stun but i don't know how effective it's gonna be he still has that teleport with that umbrella available I'm gonna go ahead and use it here is he able to catch onto the trail of the oh he found the explorer as well and uh, oh no i didn't click hit the hit Nothing available. He's gonna be able to make it to this next pallet there, though. And he's just gonna go ahead and teleport away. We're gonna see the Gravekeeper go ahead and pick up this forward here. Transitioning targets. Able to cancel the shovel with the bell there. And uh, can he get this first hit on the Gravekeeper? It looks like he's gonna be able to do so here. Um, and one shovel down for the Gravekeeper, eliminated for no reason there uh, because of that cancellation. We're gonna see him teleport after the looks like the forward here good prediction from the forward transitioning back towards graveyard to avoid that hit this is going to be a very tough position has this one pallet to work with let's see what he can do with it and uh oh wow 
avoiding both of these hits so far. Let's see if the uh, Wuchen can mind game at this pallet here. And uh, good patience from the forward. Doubling back, vaulting the pallet, and uh, staying alive. All of a sudden, the survivor's in a position where they could get that three-person escape that they really needed here. Um, and again, you see the downside to bring that double teleport over the blink. And uh, we're going to see the Great Keeper get that shovel off before he can actually, uh, you know, teleport on him there. Yeah, this is a very difficult position so far. We're going to see that bell get used there. Let's see if he gets the hit. Good patience from the Wu Chang going around that outer area instead of walking through that pallet there. And uh, we're going to see him get the hit on the Seer. Now, again, while this is a good position for these survivors, um, they're still in a scenario where they have four people injured. Oh, and the Explorer, unfortunately, making a misstep there. Uh, returning to the Wu Chang, and uh, he's going to be able to get him down here. Um, again, two people injured. Forward still half a football available to potentially harass here. Let's see if we can make, see if we can make use of it. Excellent Palestine from the forward, just trying to buy time. Let's see if he can pick up this Explorer in time. The heal only about 70% of the way done, it looks like. And the survivors, I think they're just opting to... Uh... Oh, unfortunately, that not hitting there. I think the forward just trying to get the... Oh, he's going to get the down on the Explorer, but to what cost did that really cost... Was that really worth it is the question. We're going to see them go down here. I think the general idea was they were trying to get that Explorer up and sacrifice the forward instead because the explorer is the one with the password page. Again, a 50% password page on the cypher machine. We're gonna see the Gravekeeper transition into the save, switching into black form. Gonna get that bell there, trying to force the rescue as late as possible. Gonna use the second bell, really trying to go for the terror shock here. Black form is very good for that if you are, you know, if you are losing here and unfortunately able to get it, just gonna go ahead and farm uh, that character there. And we're gonna see him just go, most likely chair the forward. Password page available for these survivors, so. This is a position where they need to uh, use that password page to pop the last Cypher Machine. Gravekeeper able to make it there. Looks like the Cypher Machine is primed yeah. anyways. And he's going to drop him. And that's going to cost him. That's going to cost the pipe Cypher Pop. But is he able to get the down on the forward? This is still a pretty good position for this Wu Chang. Double teleport still available. Going to go after the Explorer as well. Can he get both of these survivors down? Again, these survivors need a four-person, uh, sorry, a three-person escape. I don't believe he got Soul Cypher for that. No, it didn't look like it. Ooh, and uh, uh, Explorer opting to transition away from this pallet here. Not just going, running down the open a little bit unfortunate there. We're going to see him most likely teleport to the exit gate. That is going to be the case. Trying to get down as many of these survivors as possible here. And uh, charge attack available. Gets the down on the Gravekeeper as well. They're able to pick up the forward. But um, again, you can slug all of these survivors. If the survivors play smart, they could still turn it around. Yeah, good prediction. Wow, excellent prediction, prediction from the forward transitioning back there. Uh, able to avoid that, and that is a wasted umbrella, unfortunately, for this Wu Chang as well. Uh, half a football still available for the four, but I don't think there's going to be any sort of harassing unless he opts to stun on share here. This is very risky, but he's gonna, is he going to go for it? No, he's going to go ahead and drop him here, and I think he's just going to go ahead and... Oh, yeah, good patience from the Wu Chang. Going to share them. Here comes the four for the stun. Will he be able to hit it? Does get the stun. Keep in mind, this is a black form Wu Chang. They recover from these sorts of things very quickly, and he's going to be able to get the down on the forward. Can he continue after the Explorer still has... Or after the... Uh, the Gravekeeper, rather, still has an umbrella available. Gets the teleport. Gets the Soul Siphon as well. This will secure the down uh, on the Explorer. There is the down. Um, and does the forward have self-fill? He still does. Both of these characters do. So this is going to be very hard for the survivors. Again, they need a three-person escape. So going for that stun on chair, very, very risky. And unfortunately, coming back to get them to, uh, to hurt the survivors here. Uh, we'll see what they can do with this position, though. Looks like forward's gonna try to make the save. Is able to do it. This game is not over yet for the survivors. Still trying to push for this three-person escape here. Gets the down on the forward though. Unfortunately, the forward no longer self-heal available. Gonna go ahead and teleport after the gravekeeper. This will secure the down on the gravekeeper. Um, and now the survivors uh, again in a position where this is most likely going to be a tie for this Wu Chang. I think the gravekeeper is dead on chair if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the forward without self-heal available. So. Looks like the Wu Chang most likely going to try to force these survivors out again. Um, the Wu Chang knows you just need a tie in this position. So do these survivors. So they're going to stay in this game. And they're going to try to push for this three-person escape. That's really all they can do in this scenario. Um, but it looks like forwards heal about 90% of the way done. It is primed as well as it can be with that self-heal not being available. Could I go and teleport towards Graveyard? No survivors in the vicinity, unfortunately. And it looks like he's able to catch onto the trail of this seer. Looks like he is here. 
and uh, just gonna try to soul siphon him here. This is exactly what you want to do if you're the Wu Chang. Um, and is able to get that soul siphon off here. Yeah, this pretty much just secures the down on the seer as well. I'm trying to prevent any sort of options. We're almost like they just seem to teleport to the exit gate to try to come out. No, he's just gonna save that teleport. Um, he could have, you know, used the teleport to close the distance here. Can he get the heal off? Oh, he doesn't go straight in for the heal, and that might cost them here. Let's see what the explorer is doing. He's trying to go in for the heal as well. We're gonna see the bell on the seer, and he's gonna get the down on the seer. And uh, unfortunately, this is slowly falling more and more. Yeah, this is unfortunately he's falling more and more out of favor for the survivors here. He's gonna be able to pick up the forward, but after that, I mean, you just have to knock this forward down yet again. And uh, it's getting very, very, you know, very much harder for these survivors here. We're gonna expect the team to just share one of these characters here. Again, they just need to secure a tie in this scenario. And uh, that's gonna be the case. I actually believe the Explorer is dead on chair, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm actually curious why he didn't share the Explorer. Yeah, so I'm actually curious why he didn't share the, opt to share the Explorer there, but, um, Especially because Explorer... Oh, doesn't have self-heal. That's why. Okay. Four lucky guys. Exactly, Via. Exactly. Um, and we're going to oh, see... Trying to sneak in for the save. Yeah, trying to sneak in for the rescue. He's actually going to be able to make it here. And uh, these survivors, incredible, uh, you know, incredible discipline, incredible endgame here, trying to push for this win, not giving up. And you can see that really coming back to uh, to benefit them here. Uh, we're gonna see him teleport after these survivors. No soul siphon as well. I think he's gonna be able to get the seer down. Oh, seer has another owl though. He is able to do that, keeping the game alive as much as possible. Here he's gonna go after the explorer. Explorer again, still dead on chair. So if you're the uh, oh, he's able to get an illusion as well. Um, these survivors are not giving up. And uh, oh, one. Unfortunately, Gud does get the hit there. Unfortunately, not able to make it to that window. Yeah, they do need a three-person escape here. Keep in mind, Play With Fire did win that first round. Um, and uh, in the last round, the Play With Fire survivors able to get a three-person escape. So the survivors need at least a tie here. We're going to see him teleport to the exit gate here after this forward. And uh, again, these survivors are not giving up. They're really trying to push for this three-person escape. Another good prediction from the forward, able to avoid that teleport there. And uh, we're going to see the Wu Chang continue after him here. He's going to use that bell. There it is with that illusion. Oh, and uh, yeah, use that illusion there. And now he's kind of, this is this is really tough, kind of stuck at this one little pal here. Does get the down though. And um, both of these characters without self heal available, unfortunately. So this is most likely going to secure um, the kill for this Wu Chang and the win for Flip Fire. We do see that uh, one seer escape there. And uh, there will be the surrender for the survivors. A three person elimination there. For the play with fire hunter that will make the score for the final round a final score of six to two um in a 70 seven to two win in the first round um for play with fire so that is two wins for play with fire zero for synergy and that will be um the overall win for play with fire i'm not sure if they're gonna play a third round but we'll see wow any post-game analysis donna Guys, look at Donna. Do you see my Wu Chang skin? Are you watching the stream? Uh, yeah, I yeah. am. Guys, do you see this Wu Chang skin? How is this not the best skin you've ever seen? <laughs> Donna, look at these. Look at these. Look at these arms. These are some sex. These are some sexy arms, Donna. Look at this. But yeah, guys, we are. Yeah, it looks like we are going to play a third round for fun. These, you know, again, this is just a friendly scrim. Trying to get as much practice in for both of these teams as possible. So you might as well play out a third round um, and see how these players can improve and capitalize off of these first two rounds here. So Requiem better. Requiem is not better. I, I don't like Requiem that much. I do. It's kind of... I used to love Requiem, but it's. I honestly think Requiem is not that good anymore. Now that I have Frost. Oh, I also have um, Broken Blossoms is really nice. You guys want to play Chinatown? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Ruby said no. Ruby said no, Chinatown. You guys both have to be really oh, Let's go, Golden Key. Let's
Because this is for practice anyway, we should be... Anyways, we are going to play a third round here, guys. Uh, Broken Blossom better. How can you not like Frost? Are you talking about Fro better than Frost or better than Requiem? Because Broken Blossom is cool. I like Broken Blossom as well, but... How many Eskins do I have? I don't have a lot. I have this one and this one. And then I have these two. So I only have four. I don't have flying guillotine on this account, which sucks. I have it on my alt account, but I don't have it on this one, unfortunately. <laughs> I still think it's great too. I really love that Wuchang scene. That's one of my favorites as well. Because Synergy lost because they didn't have my Magician. That is correct, Joggy. You're right about that. Looks like we are going to see Ever Sleeping Town. This is actually one of my favorite maps to, to play on. I love playing on this map as Hunter. I love playing on this map as Survivor. And I love watching people play on this map. I don't know why. I just, I really enjoy uh, Ever Sleeping Town, so. Better than Frost. Oh my god. That's, wow. Disappointing. Disappointing. I actually don't have, I have the A tier accessory because it goes well with Frost. But I don't have Tidebringer, so I might get Tidebringer at some point, but we'll see. So we're gonna have a uh it looks like leo is gonna be the hunter here for play with fire i actually had never seen leo play hunter before so uh, send me an oh yeah hold on again i've never actually seen leo play hunter before so this will be interesting Leo's okay. reminds me of michael oh, yeah. frost reminds um, me of michael jacks eli Jorge just said you and music are cute Oh, thank you, Doggy. Thank you. This is why we all love Joggy, guys. Joggy's so sweet. I see. Nah, Frost is better. Exactly, dude. Exactly. Do you have the Tiger Eli skin? Uh, I think I do. I have, like, every Seer skin except for the S2 ones. Except for the one that you spend a lot of money on, and then the, um... What do you call it? The limited one. I think I have every other... I'll check after, but... But yeah, I'm pretty sure I have Tiger Eli. That's right. I'll check out this game. Anyways, uh, we are going to see a Dream Witch and Bon Bon ban from the Survivors here. Um, and uh, again, these Survivors don't know what... I don't think they know what this Hunter plays, so we're going to see Dream Witch. Uh, again, get banned here. Ever Sleeping Town, actually a very strong Dream Witch map. It is a pretty dark map, which is very, uh, you know, very easy for the spawn followers to sneak up and get free hits. It looks like possibly clown character selection from this hunter here. This is going to be very interesting. Uh, Mad Eyes as well, hovering over a few different options. Again, I actually don't even know what this, this hunter opts to play. I do believe they have some experience with Wu Chang, but we'll have to see if that comes into play here. From the hunter side, though, we're going to have a three survivor ban. It looks like it's going to be mechanic, forward, and mercenary. No, uh, no priestess ban, which is very interesting, especially because this is one of the strongest priestess maps in the game. Let me let my dog outside real quick, guys. Give me one second. There we go. Okay. And it looks like... Uh, oh, can we see Feaster? Donna, please tell me it's a Feaster. It's a Feaster, Eli. No, play Feaster. No, they play. I don't like Frost, but because it's Eli's favorite skin, I suddenly love that skin. <laughs> That's why Joggy's the best, guys. Yeah, looking at the uh, looking at the Survivor side here, it looks like we're gonna see that uh, Priestess immediately gets selected from the Survivors again. Priestess, very strong on a map like Ever Sleeping Town. There's a lot of thick walls, but it's thick as in T H I C K, not T H I C C, because that'd be weird. So we're just gonna say C K. For PG purposes, it's CK. Anyways, um, we're going to see the final character selections are in for these survivors and the hunter here. Looks like we're going to see Priestess, um, you know, Priestess being that support character, as well as the Seer. Both S tiers available. Like, Seer is S tier, guys. Don't argue with me. Seer is S tier. Um, we have, uh, we have, yeah, we have Explorer as well. Explorer is actually very weak against Axeway. Once they leave that corrupt area, even if they're in small mode, um, the purple fireballs still circle them. And it uh, looks like we're going to see Gravekeeper uh, as the final character selection. Gravekeeper being one of the best rescue characters in the game, besides that forward and mercenary, which unfortunately are banned for the survivors.
Eli, Eli likes it thick. Oh, um. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Mm. Eli, what is your response to this? Uh, I can't really answer that. I can't answer that question on stream. I might get banned from YouTube, so we're gonna we're gonna avoid that. Okay. Um. We are gonna see a graveyard. Yeah. Sp Wait, what? What done? Uh, yeah, graveyard spawn. Graveyard spawn from the Axeway immediately rotating over towards um, this uh, Geisha Gate corner house area. Locating the Priestess early on. This is not actually too good if you're the Hunter here. They do have a portal available. Let's see if you get the Fireball here. Able to avoid that. Good job from the Priestess there. And uh, excellent patience. Oh, unfortunately, portaling into the Hunter there. Giving a free hit. That's not ideal for the survivor here. And uh, this is a pretty good start from this Axeway. Again, now you have to chase a Priestess in corner house, though. This is not ideal. Priestess is a very good kiter, especially in this area of the map. Uh, Blink is available in 20 seconds for the Axeway. Let's see if you can get it online. Able to dodge that fireball there. Goes through the portal. And oh, portals into the Hunter yet again. Able to get that hit on the Priestess and secures the down there on the Priestess. And this is a very good start for this Axe Boy. And um, looking at the decoding progress so far, it looks like uh, Explorer is going to go ahead and help the, uh, the um, Gravekeeper in finishing that Cypher. And... Um, Sorry, my dog's attacking them. Distracting. Okay. And uh, it looks like, uh, looking at the decoding progress, Seer Cypher about 50% of the way done. The survivors were able to pop that first Cypher with a password page here. And we'll see if the... I expect the survivors to go for an after half rescue here. They may try to use that tie turner to the advantage, or they may just not yeah. save at all. But it looks like Gravekeeper is transitioning in. This is an excellent job. Yeah, definitely. This is an excellent job from this Gravekeeper, or from this Hunter, rather, hitting the Gravekeeper out of Shovel, acknowledging um, that the Gravekeeper is trying to go for the save. Oh, did they get hit by the jump? Almost getting hit by the tram there. Oh, we're going to see uh, Blink from the Axe Boy there. Yeah, possibly trying to do that there, but excellent patience from the Gravekeeper avoiding that. Going to use that portal there. Excellent job avoiding that from the Priestess. Still with a portal available. Going to go to use that to transition even farther away. Oh, try to do the double back trick. Unfortunately, unable to do it there. Excellent owl from the Seer, though. This is going to buy more time for this Priestess to transition. Another portal is a bit almost online for them here, so they're going to be able to get it back before the Seer, Seer Owl does run out here and expect them to try to use that portal. No, it looks like they're going to go ahead and just transition. There is the flame. You get the hit. Does, is able to dodge that for the Priestess. Still gets the hit through the pallet there. Unfortunately, the, the slower pallet throwing speed from the Priestess costing them the down there. And uh, it was a good rebound from the Priestess for sure, but a good discipline from the Axe Boy. Able to secure the kill here. Um, and uh, the Priestess is dead on share. So if you're the survivor team here, you do need to pu you know push for uh, that tie here in the end game. Looks like we're going to see, looking at the decoding progress, Seer is hiding here. And I think we're going to see the survivors most likely just go ahead and heal up here, if possible. Uh, we're going to see the Axe Boy go ahead and uh, keep looking around the map here, trying to locate where these survivors are healing. But it looks like, oh, I don't know if they're actually, no, it looks like actually going to locate, uh, oh, leaving the corrupt area, though. And uh, this is going to allow them to see the survivors here. Most likely going to go ahead and chase after the Seer there. Excellent flame for the first hit as well. And uh, we'll see what the Seer can do in this area. This is not a bad area if you're a survivor, but... Oh, running into the Hunter there, but good patience from the uh, the Hunter. Unfortunately, still not able to get the hit, though. And we're going to see the Seer vault this window and try to transition towards these other two pallets over here. A password page is available for the Explorer. Flame is online. Able to dodge the Flame there. Can we get this pallet in time? Unfortunately, not able to do that. That incredible speed boost from the Axe White, plus the slowdown effect of that full presence. This is one of the things people talk about a lot and complain about with Axe Boy. I complain about it as well. The slowdown effect really neutralizing any sort of hiding potential from the Seer here. And uh, we're going to see what the survivors can do in this position. They do have a password page available. That middle Cypher machine um, with a lot of progress there. Looks like 50% of the way done. They still need to set another Cypher machine after this, though. And we're going to see the Great Keeper go for a four half save. No time. Blink is not up. Yeah, not up for another 10 seconds. Gets the flame on the Seer here. Blink available in five seconds. I think he's just going to try to trap the Gravekeeper in this area until the Blink is back online. And um, good patience so far from this Gravekeeper. And uh, there is the... Oh, no, he missed the Blink. And uh, no, he does need to use it, yeah. Uh, almost a that would have actually been a clean prediction from the gravekeeper if the blink went through and uh, i think that was actually a bit of a misstep from the hunter and not clicking the blink but it actually worked in their favor there looking at the last cypher machine here it's about 20 percent of the way done explore with a 10 percent password page um 
They are going to be forced to go in for the Sable. Let's see if he can dodge this one here. Going to go ahead and just hit the Explorer here. Going to try to snipe him with this Flame here. Can he get it before he makes the rescue? And it doesn't look like it is able to... Oh, gets the Flame hit! Let's see what the Seer can do. This is a very tough area. Except forward or... Uh, Gravekeeper getting up there, and unfortunately, this is going to allow him to get slugged with no self-heal available. All you have to do now, if you're the hunter here, is down this seer, then go ahead and share that explorer. That will secure a four-person elimination. Uh, let's see if we can make this pallet in time. And no, unable to do so. That slowdown effect costing them the down there. And we're going to go ahead and see. And yeah, just the surrender from the survivors. That is a four-person elimination. Looked like a very good spot for the survivors, but... You know, as soon as that, you know, uh, that ex the, uh, the Gravekeeper went down, um, after making that first rescue there, that was the difference in the match, unfortunately, for the Survivor team. Wow. Alright, let me let you back, Donna. Are they still doing one more? Yeah. Maybe we'll see a feast or a Wu Chang, you never know. Uh huh. Um, Eli, do you think Ravi plays Wu Chang or Feaster? Like He plays Wu Chang, so I think he uses Requiem as the skin, which is like the Just kidding. I actually used to love Requiem, but Oh I didn't check for if I I didn't check my my Tiger Eli skin. I'll check after this game. I remind me guys in chat, remind me in chat. Do you have Sears oh, dance Ravi. do you have Sears dance emote? No, I do not. I have. How do you not have it? Because I've never had. I never got it. I don't know. I have the. I have the mourn emote, but I don't have the dance one. The dance one is so cute. I agree, like. <laughs> I'll show you guys after this game. Just remind me in chat. I'll. I'll show you guys. Grass here too, that's a GG. Interesting. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Let's look at Grass's profile while we're at it. Oh, interesting okay. win rate, 30%. Okay. Eli, do you want to talk about your win rate? Oh. Uh, I have a 51% survivor win rate as a champion and an 86% hunter win rate as a Cyclops. Is there anything wrong with that, Donna? Um, I don't know. Doc's win rate was looking higher, though. I'm just saying. Doc's win rate's, I believe, 68, if I'm not mistaken, and mine's 86. Is it actually? Yeah, so his is 68, mine's 86. So mine's actually, yeah, about 20, wow. almost 20% 20 higher. Poor Doc. How do I, like, look at... Donna, say something in the room, in the chat. Just say anything. Uh, I, I, I don't have access to it. No, 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 just say something in the chat, like right now. Wait, oh, there. In the game, like the in-game chat, so I can view my profile. Hmm. Win rates. Win rates. Uh -huh. By the way, guys. Oh, hold on, guys. Look at this, guys. Look at this. This is my. This is my. This is when I did my first game with Frost in rank. Um. Wait. We didn't check. Three cypher machines remaining. I don't know why I played against Griffins when I'm a Cyclops or whatever. But. Yeah. Anyways. Is that a legend <laughs> Tiger Eli makes me go friendly. Oh. <laughs> Alright, we're just waiting on... Annie and Kazu. Yeah. That one to be... Tyrone's win rate, though. One defeat? What was my... What was my one defeat? Oh, no, this was a custom. This was a custom. This was a 1v1. It's where I surrendered after 1v1. There's no defeats. Like says, These are all customs. We say Tyrone. <laughs> Eli, you need to coach me with Wu Chang. You should ask Ty to do that. I can I can tell you what I know. Um. Okay, Ty. Let's let's check. Is he online? Oh. <laughs> Just gonna flex like that. I see how it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm a I'm a frost simp. See guys, I don't simp, you know? What is this? Um uh, sure. Everyone sub to Eli. I don't have eight hundred. What how many do I have six hundred? Yes, a thousand guys, yay. 
No, I'm just playing. But, um... Yes, I appreciate Grass and Revy for that. That's very nice of you guys to say. Oh, I feel kind of sick again. That's not good. Eli surrendered. He was a 1v1. <laughs> All right, anyways, uh, going into the match here, we're gonna see, uh, they might just be trolling. Okay, well, looks like Hellember and Mad Eyes are the bands here. I think the survivors, again, just kinda trolling here. I was simping earlier. I was saying how it's a nice skin. I wasn't like, oh my God, Frost, guys, oh my God, I simp. No, we weren't doing that. Priestess Guide, I don't simp for Priestess Guide anymore. The best Priestess skin is Golden Future, but I yeah, I don't. The best, the best priestess skin is Golden Future, but I don't have it because it's limited. Oh, look away, look away. Golden Future, look Golden Future is the best. Golden Future is the best skin in the whole game for any character. Oh no, look away, look away. Ember Band, yeah, they're just yeah. This last round's for fun, so I think they're just letting this hunter play, whatever they want. We're gonna see mechanic, mercenary, and priestess. This is a, these are very kind of obvious bands. Uh, again, mechanic being the best decoding character in the game, you want to. Yeah, you want to eliminate that mechanic if possible. Slowing down that decoding progress as much as possible for the survivors. Looks like we're gonna see Priestess Band as well. Again, Priestess, very strong on this map, and Mercenary, the best rescue character in the game, being eliminated as an option from the Play With Fire Survivor team here. Morgan Le Fay, isn't that the homeless skin or something? Oh, the homeless skin looks better than your Frost Moon Chain. Heck no. Okay, everyone in chat, which is better, Frost or Morgan Le Fay? Morgan Le Fay. Frost. We need to know, guys, which is better, chat, Frost or Morgan Le Fay? Everyone, everyone say your opinion on that. Okay, we're gonna have, looks like we're gonna have from the survivor side, oh, Mind's Eye. Oh, uh oh, here we go. Yeah. Play with, Play with Fire won the first two rounds, um, so he got one for Morgan, one for Frost, two for Frost, two to two, three oh, to two. Oh, what's this, Eli? What's this? Four to two, five, three. Morgan is nasty. Thank you. That counts as minus two for Morgan. No, no. Look away, look away, Kurt. Um, anyways, from the, uh, from the survivors, we're going to see that, that fine sign. Oh, uh, God, this is going to be funny. Prisoner's S tier looks exactly as Guide in Dreamwitch skin, but it's S tier for no reason. That is actually true. That is actually true. Only my opinion matters and I say Frost. There we go. That's exactly what we need here. Norton's oh, Supremacy. Norton's... Norton's Prospector, right? Yeah. Okay. How do you not know their names, Eli? All I knew was Eli. And then I know one of other... And then I know one other person. Wait, who was the other one? Fiona. I know Eli, that's about it. Yeah. I do not memorize anyone's name, unfortunately. Donna said, Perk, I'm famous. <laughs> I know, she noticed you. She, she like, noticed you, Perk. Oh, like, oh, dang, oh. like. We are going to see this uh, Geisha Gate spawn, which means the key spawn is Graveyard Gate. Uh, we do see the Cowboy get the key spawn there, I believe. Wait, is it Graveyard Gate? I think it's Graveyard Gate. We're gonna see him immediately set down a trap, trying to prepare, um, eliminate these tight cutting areas uh, later in the match. We do see the Mind's Eye use that cane tap there and is already in Corner House, an excellent spawn for the Mind's Eye. Getting that Corner House area, we're gonna see another trap set up from this game here. We're just trying to prepare this as much as possible, trapping the window as well. Um, and uh, we're gonna see him transition. Oh, finding, unfortunately, the prospector running into the hunter there is able to get the magnet to avoid the hit, but uh, this is a pretty good spot for this hunter, able to find them early on, able to avoid that hook there. Hook there. It does have a second one available, and uh, oh, unable to get it there. Um, this is gonna slow down the this character down a little bit here. We'll see what they can do if he has another trap available. And uh, oh, unfortunately, getting mind game there and is able to get the first hit. Excellent job from the gamekeeper. Um, getting that hit there on the prospector early on. Thank you. We're saying thank you for all the players. Um, I, I think it's just to mess around now. Yeah, we are going to see the gamekeeper go for this hook. Can he get the hook on the prospector? Trying to avoid this as much as they can. Excellent job from the uh, prospector avoiding that hit there. 
Does have blink though, unfortunately, and ooh, a very early magnet is gonna cost the prospector here. And uh, he's gonna be able to get the down without using that blink, and that is not ideal um, for that prospector. As a prospector, you really wanna try to throw that magnet directly on the character if possible. And uh, unfortunately, they were unable to get that there. And we're gonna see the prospector get shared at a very weak chair for the survivors as well. This is gonna be very hard. Um, on them if they want to go for a rescue most likely they're just gonna probably give up on this prospect or not even perform any sort of rescue uh, at all and uh, but we'll have to see if you're the survivor team Donna here what, what do you think what would you do I think the issue here for the survivors, yeah, I think the issue here for the survivors, we're going to see the mind's eye come in for the save. What is going oh, on? Oh no. I think they're just trolling at this point. Oh, barely missing the Mind's eye able to get the save, no tide turner. I actually think in this, oh, cowboy with a good lasso to make some distance for the prospector here. It's not actually that the prospector's kite was too bad. They've had a pretty good amount of time. It was more that they died, unfortunately, in a very difficult area. Um, and we're going to see him use that hook to try to prevent any sort of body blocking here. Blink is available for this hunter. And uh, we're going to see him most likely just blink this prospector here for the uh, for the kill. Keep in mind the prospector is done on chair. Good Magnus is going to buy a little bit of time here. But, oh, forward coming in for the harass there. But unfortunately, um, getting stuck in the trap. Missing the blink there. And the prospector is able to stay alive. Can he get to this pallet? Any good stun from the forward. And, uh... Yeah, hitting the stun there, giving the prospector time to transition. We're going to see double harassing as the Mind's Eye um, is going to keep trying to decode this last Cypher. And we're going to most likely just see him eliminate the forward in this position. Good hook there, gets the down on the forward. Looking at the decoding progress, it's 40% of the way done on the Mind's Eye Cypher. And um, still two Cypher Machines necessary after that. Yeah, we're going to see him get chaired here. Um, and uh, we're going to see him break the pallet as well. Looks like the survivor's opting to just go ahead and heal up here. And um, it looks like uh, we'll see who goes in for the save. This is the forward's first chair. All of a sudden, this turned into a pretty good position for the survivors. The Mindsay with that fast decoding, uh, able to keep decoding these cypher machines for free in this situation. I mean, if you're the hunter here, Donna, what do you what do you think you need to do to potentially set, secure a win for this round? Um, Yeah, excellent job from the gamekeeper getting the down on the forward there. You have two people <laughs> continuing to harass. This is going to be very difficult for this hunter. We're going to see. Uh, gets the hook to close the distance on the prospector. Unfortunately, missing that there. Has one more available. Does still get it. And is able to get the hit, leaving the prospector at a quarter health. And uh, this is going to force the harassers to move off here. And uh, this is going to allow them to potentially share this prospector for free. Going to drop a trap as well. And, uh, again, going for double harassing. I don't know if this is going to work. Able to drop the forward. Yeah, this is just not an effective strategy, unfortunately. The Cowboy unable to get a lasso off as well. Um, so the harassing did buy a little bit of extra time, but it ultimately caused the Prospector to eat a hit there. And now nobody is able to save because both people are injured um, to a point where one hook is able to put the survivors down. So um, we're going to see the Prospector try to go in for the save. And uh, good job dodging that hook there, but another hook available. Oh, able to dodge this one as well. And uh, we're going to see that lasso does get the lasso off. Can he get the hit? And is able to get the hit to down the forward there. One Cypher machine. Yeah, sacrificing them there. One Cypher machine remaining. Let's look at the Mind's Eyes decoding progress. Still has not actually started it here. Um, and uh, it's going to be very hard. Does get the magnet there. And uh, this will just knock down the prospector. So I don't think the harassing in this situation, again, we were talking about them possibly just trolling this match. But um, again, the situation is just not ideal for the survivors. And this harassing not paying off for them as well. We're going to see the Mindsight try to pressure the Cypher Machine here. And, uh, oh, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Uh, they're going to get the down as well. All of a sudden, the Survivor's in a position where they could have tied pretty easily. Uh, kind of throwing this to a four-person elimination, possibly, for this Hunter. And uh, this is not ideal if you are the Survivor team. And using an early self-heal from the Prospector. Able to get the hook as well. And is able to get the down. No self-heal available. All you have to do now is leave this for, or leave this Prospector slug. You can go for this Mind's Eye as well. And uh, try to secure this elimination here. We're going to see the Mind's Eye most likely go in for the heal on the Prospector. But he's going to go ahead and chase it. Take his time. Share the... Pro uh, sorry. Share the... Um... Oh, but he got caught in a trap. He got caught in a trap here. He's able to break free from it just in time. But I don't think it's going to be to much effect here 
Let's see if he can... Oh, he's going to go ahead and avoid vaulting this here. Blink is available for this Hunter as well. And uh, goes for that Blink there. Gets the down in the mind's eye. Prospector, no self-heal available. This will secure the four-person elimination for this Gamekeeper. Excellent gameplay from this Hunter here. Um, a pretty uh, pretty rough start. Able to get a you know a fairly quick down on the, the Prospector there. But he was, was able to get a good chair as well. This fire was able to perform a successful rescue. But um, unable to get it here. Uh, we're going to see the gamekeeper go ahead and share this prospector here, securing that four-person elimination. Incredible gameplay um, from this hunter. Yeah, so looking at the final, looking at the, yeah, looking at the final results here, Play With Fire won the first round 7-2, to um, second round 6-2, to two, and this last round was a tie of 5-5. Five to five. Um, so ultimately, that is a 2-0 win for Play With Fire um, after all the rounds here. And um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, before we leave, I'm going to show you guys my Seer skins because someone was asking about Tiger Eli, so I have to check if I have it. I'm pretty sure I do. Um, where is it? Do I have it? Yeah, here it is. Look at this, guys. Wow, Tiger Eli. Tiger Eli, you think this is going to be the new meta? No. <laughs> Um, so this is, this is Tiger Eli. I would like to say that Frost is better, because Frost is, but yeah, that's my, oh, I have this too. Um, but yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for the stream. Um, that could have been a, yeah, I know a lot faster, exactly. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching the Play With Fire versus, uh, Synergy Scrimmage. The links to both Discord servers are in the video description below, so if you guys want to join those, don't forget to check that out. Um, and, uh... No, it is not, because Fusion is not playing. Um, I'm not going to support my clan when my... I'm not supporting... If you guys want to join the Fusion server, uh, go ahead and check out whatever the most recent video is. The Fusion server should be linked in the video description of that video. Um, I believe also the League server is in the video description for this one. Um, I better use it on stream. If you guys want me to use Tiger Eli next to my stream rank, Survivor rank, I'll, I'll use it in a match. I don't mind doing that, but... um. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching the stream. I appreciate everyone who came, uh, even some of those who live in uh, 4 a.m. time zones. So <laughs> I appreciate that as well. Um, if you guys liked, if you guys enjoyed the stream, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would appreciate that. Um, but uh, also don't forget to check out their discords as well. And uh, yeah, I will see you all later.